So thank you, Rainer, for being here. The first question is, why did you choose Dries to portrait in this film? Why, why did I? Why did you choose Dries yeah, for, for, to, do, to do a film about why, why, oh, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> a good question. How, how, why did I choose Dries? Uh, I'm always interested in creative people and mostly I shoot portraits, that's, that's my main uh, documentary work and uh, yes, and I like to portray creative people. It started, uh, the first film I made about a creative person was, was about a photographer 30 years ago or, or so and it, 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 the interesting thing was I started doing it because it was it gave me the ability to reflect about my own work as a yeah. filmmaker because photography and filmmaking is very similar and so I liked that a lot and it really helped me in finding my own approach or, 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 if, or in, a, in a way it was also uh, how do you say it was I felt I, I do it right the way I do it by looking at the work of other people and uh, yeah, and then after the first film about a photo photographer, it, in the end it turned out to be ten films about photographers. And uh, I met Dries through one of the photographers I was portraying, and it was Jürgen Teller, and he's an art photographer and a fashion photographer. And uh, it was an interesting film and an, an interesting process to make this film about Jürgen, but at that point in my life I was already a little bit bored with the photography theme. Not with the photographers itself, but if you make a film, once you found out how you show photography, how you show the work of a photography, how you show how he works, and so uh, it's not developing anymore. So I, I was a little bit at the end of my, my uh, creativity. So I was open for something new. And uh, Jürgen was photographing Dries, uh, a Dries collection, not Dries himself. Uh, in his garden in, when was it, 19, no, it was 2009 or 10, I don't remember exactly anymore, and I, I, at that time I didn't know much about, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even know who Dries was, I had never heard the name before because I was not so much interested in the fashion world, I knew who Karl Lagerfeld was, I knew who uh, some a few other guys were and some brands like Dior or, or, or the big uh, fashion brands I knew, but never Dries. But what I saw in this garden, it, it uh, convinced me immediately that it's very rich, very beautiful, and also the person when I met him, he was totally different than what I expected to be a fashion designer like. He was not extroverted and loud and shouting. So he was very quiet, very normal. So we sat together in the breaks of the shootings uh, when we had lunch together. And then I asked him, so how, how did you become a fashion designer? And it was all very natural, very normal. And this was something I liked very much. And that's how the idea grew. So I, on the one side, I was at the end of my photography uh, work and open for something new. And at the same time, it was, a, was a, an interesting person. And it, another reason for, my, for making films for me is always I'm curious and it, do, documentary films, making documentary films is a beautiful chance to get access to a world that you had, didn't know before. And so I, th I thought this is interesting to find out more about the fashion world for me. In another interview, you said that uh, you think that uh, Dries was an artist. Can you just explain a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say if it's an artist. Or, he himself would never say he's, a, he's an art, artist. It, there's a lot of craftsmanship involved, but uh, and maybe it, uh, it was a little, little bit uh, a misinterpretation. I normally say I wanted to look at him as I would look at an artist, so I, I wanted to look uh, at his work, how he works, and at his artistic biography, and that's how I wanted to make the film, because 
now that the film is out, since uh, almost a year, uh, I, I see the expectations, different expectations of people who are going to watch a film about a fashion designer. And there's something like a genre of fashion films, some, you might call it fashion film genre, and this is something I'm not interested in. And it's also a misunderstanding with, with the audience sometimes. People expect it's about the drama behind the scenes and the models and, and, and more about that and the, the ex extraordinary life of a fashion designer. But this is not what I was interested in. I wanted to show how it works and like I would, would do it with any ar other artist. Yeah, the main theme for this edition of For the Postdoc Kids, Hardship and Post Memory, uh, do you think that somehow this film contributes to create a productive memory in the fashion world? <laughs> yeah, is it is it does it create memory in the fa in the fashion history or fashion world? You mean? I hope so because everything I do and everything I did or most of the films that I did about artists and photographers, they all like I made a film about August Sander, the German photographer who was active in 1930s Weimar times. So his work travels around the world and most of the time my film travels with the exhibition. And so that's the state of the art film about August Sander now and I like to, to uh, produce work that has such a value or, or work and it's not, not something that you watch and then two months later you forget about it. So everybody says and I hope we, we cannot look in the future but Probably Dries will never do a film like that again because he hated sometimes being filmed uh, even this time. He's, he's, he's not searching for cameras and observation and documentary filmmakers around him. So, so I think it's a one, it was a one-time chance. And he's very happy with, with, with the film. Of course, it's a, it's a moment in his life, in his career. It's one year that I followed him for collections. But it also, I also look back in the film about his previous career. And, uh, and, and he recognizes himself a lot in the film. He, he likes it. And so I hope, of course, that it, that it has a place in the, in the history of Films about fashion okay, designers. So how hard was to get into the trees world? <laughs> you can get into the trees world, yeah, that's not so easy. Uh, the hardest thing was to convince himself. So, so once I met him in the in his garden with Jürgen Teller, uh, then this idea was growing in my mind to make a film about him. And but I didn't ask him immediately. I first went to a, to a, some TV editors at Arte, a German French channel, art channel, and they immediately said, "Oh, that would be wonderful. We we, we are waiting for a film about him for years." And we other filmmakers tried to approach him, and he always uh, uh, said no. And so and uh, so when I went to Dries. He didn't say no, but he, he didn't say yes either. So he, he said, well, maybe not now, it's not the right time, and so And this took three years. So, so he invited me to the fashion shows. I went there again and again. And I, I, I knew you cannot push this person. It, it, that, that's not how he works, because he doesn't need it. He, he is so busy with his work. He's successful with his work, and so concentrated on everything what he, what he does. And he was also afraid that he was afraid of a few things. Uh, on the one hand, that I might disturb him yeah. in his work, that he cannot, cannot focus on his hard work and tough work, what, what he does, and to be very, very stressful and, and challenge, challenging. <clears throat> and on the other hand, he was also a little bit afraid that it might take away the magic of the fashion because when, you know, especially maybe women more than men in, in a way, there's a magic around fashion, about a dress, a certain fabric, embroideries, and so. And when you see it in the store or on a model or on a catwalk, it has a, it's, it can be very, very exciting and, and, and magical and beautiful. So, but when you see the process, how it's developed, it can be very normal in a way. So you have some fabrics, and you have a scissor, and you there's knitting and a lot of craftsmanship involved and the, 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 he was afraid that the magic might disappear. Did you try somehow that the film wasn't 
while constructing the film that 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 it, it has some characteristics from Dries uh, personality or Dries works kind of when you were editing uh, did you try that it was like simple or more the film yeah. in the end. Just, just like a mirror of the character. Yeah. Yes, of course, that was very important. Many people, I, I don't have, yeah, I know, it's a, it's a slower film, it's not a fast film. Yeah. Many people say, oh, we are used to fashion, it's always hectic, yeah. stress, so, so where's that hectic and, and that stress? To be honest, I could, if I would focus on the stress, I could make a stressful film about Reese also. But that's not reflecting his personality because he's not a person who shouts or screams when there's something wrong. Of course, there are things wrong every time when there are more than three, four people involved in in, in a production. Something is always wrong in in a way, and so they are. 70 models sometimes, the same amount of hairdressers, makeup people, uh, producers, people who are responsible for the light, for the show. So it's a huge, huge uh, uh, team that, that works there together. So, but I wasn't interested in that. I wanted to really to see who is that person. Same as if you would make a film about Picasso. So what is in his brain? Where does it come from? And how does he work? How does he transform it into art in, in, in a way? And that's what, what I was interested in. And when you see him, so the scenes in his garden, the garden is a very important mo uh, uh, thing in his life. And, and also when he's at home and you see how he decorates his tables and the flowers and the bouquets. So then you really get the essence of trees. It's a, ma a man, a person, who needs to create 24 hours a day. And nowadays, what's your relation with fashion work? Have it changed or...? You do, you, it has changed, of, of course, because now, I mean, when I later found out which extraordinary role trees place in the fashion world, and that he's really a master, a genius in what, what he's doing, I mean, it's such a luxury that I w was able to spend a whole year with him, more or less, and uh, got access and could look ver from very close how how a collection is is put together or, or designed. So, I have a lot more knowledge now. I look at fabrics, dresses, garments, collections very, very different. I, and uh, yeah, and you, you, I can't delete that in my head anymore. So, and and I think not everything that I see from other designers is is is, is very nice or very beautiful or very clever. But when I see Dries developing, even after the the the, the year that I followed him. I understand him even now more and more each year. And he's changing, of course, because he's not, 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 not that kind of person who says, OK, I have my style, I have my essence, and, and I will repeat that. Of course, there is a, there is a soul in it, that, the soul of trees, that, that you always discover in basic elements. Uh, but it's, it's developing with each collection. And that's beautiful to see, yeah. And of course, now I'm also curious about other uh, designers, but to be honest, because the film is very successful, so, so it's, it's, it's shown in 36 countries worldwide, it's next, next year in January it starts in cinemas in Japan, in China, in Russia, in Europe anyway, so, so it's really successful. So people ask, so, or producers, so what will you do next, can we do another fashion film, or the distributors ask, and so, but I don't, the way I think about it is, I don't want to uh, jump on the next designer who is not the same quality as trees, and that's not so easy to find, to, to find the, the, a person who, who works in the same quality and also in the, with that independent mind, yeah. which I like a lot. That, that's very important for me. I don't want to go to a big brand and there's a designer who, who works for, I don't know, I don't want to give you any names about that. But uh, and you know what the CEO decides about what the designer has to do, uh, uh, more or less. So it's not so easy to find the right person, but maybe now I found one. <laughs> <laughs> For you as a documentarist, what 
what's the perfect way to relate with the subject you are portraying? I want to be as close as possible, on the other hand with a little distance of course, but for me the most important thing is to get very close because the, the idea behind my films is more or less to give the audience an access that they would never have normally in their life. So they can only have it th through the film. That you get, go to, can go to the studio of trees that you feel feel very close to him. That that in the, when you watch the film in the end, you you you, you I, I want the audience to have the feeling that they have been there with him, and that's something I hear very often. There, there was a screening in Antwerp, and after it was the second screening that we had in the cinema, and I was there, and Reese was there, and afterwards a woman came to me and she said. She had to close the, her eyes five times during the film, and I said, "Oh, that's terrible! Why, why did that happen?" I said, and she said, "Yeah, to to make sure that she, the, she's not carrying the camera and going into that world, to realize that no, I'm in a cinema, I'm not there." <laughs> no, but it, but she felt a little bit, bit that way, and to get that feeling. This means you have to be very close to the person, and also uh, you have to get close because they have to trust you, otherwise it doesn't work. I don't, and I, can, I think I can only make films about people that I like in a way, that are sympathetic for me, that's also very important. So what was the main difference uh, between portraying a photographer or a fiction designer? It's not, yeah, there, I can give you, there are a lot of simila similarities, but it's more interesting to talk, talk about the differences. Uh, the big difference is when you, watch a photographer or when all the photographers I watch during their work. So there's something that that uh, is happening inside a camera. It's not so visible. You see how somebody moves, how, he, how he's in contact with the protagonist or with the person in front of the camera and how he tries to get that confidence the same as I do it with my protagonist as a filmmaker. So that's that's easy. And, and most of the photographers or artists don't have a problem with showing that process. But for a fa fashion designer, showing the process is really riskful. And I was not aware of that. I normally thought it's very simple and easy. So I come and I watch how you start and your ideas. And then we, and in the end, we, sh we show the presentation, which is the fashion show. And then we see what, what came out. But th this was the it needed a lot of trust and confidence from tree side to, to to my person to 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 let me into that world and, and let me show that what it happened in the beginning many many times that they said oh please don't show this this looks ugly or oh, no not not this and and after 10 12 shooting days it was different but but that was was not so easy and i i'm very thankful that he opened up and trusted me in the end, and now he's he's happy with every sequence which is in the film. And sure. So thank you very much. Martin. My pleasure. Thank we you. We are very honored to have you here. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to come. <laughs> <laughs>